How are you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for HabitsUnplugged.com. Today I'm going to talk about eight tips for sustained habit change. First thing is to keep it as simple as possible, right? Keep it slow, keep it steady, but keep it simple. You know, habit change is not going to happen overnight, regardless of how you want it to happen overnight, how you want it to change immediately, how much other people try and say to you, well, you know, you can change your habit in seven days. All it takes is 25 days for a complete habit change. Ain't gonna happen, right? 30 days is a good time period for getting a grip on a habit, right? For sort of going through four full weeks, right? And understanding a lot about your habit, what's triggering your habit, what's, um, what parts of the habit are on a subconscious level and bringing those parts into your conscious awareness, right? Becoming aware of them, you know, going through, as I say, four full weekdays, four full weekends. Um, but it's not going to change your habit, right? It's very easy after seven, uh, 30 days to slip back into your old routines. You know, they're still there waiting behind. So 30 days is a good time to get a habit on it, uh, a handle on it, but it's not going to change anything. So just remember, slow and steady. Keep it slow, keep it day by day, bit by bit. Take it steady and you'll get there eventually. Um, the second habit is, as I say, commit to that first 30 days because, you know, changing a habit for life, right, especially something that you've been doing for uh, a long time, can be daunting, right? It can be overwhelming. It can put you in a place where you're thinking to yourself, I can't do this, you know, this is just not going to happen because you're thinking in terms of forever right however long that forever might be in terms of your personal life uh, it's it's a lot easier to think about things in smaller chunks right to you know 30 days is a manageable space of time to be able to um, envisage yourself being 30 days ahead what's life going to be like in 30 days right everyone can do that um, plus as I said before it allows you to go through the iterations, many different iterations of your habit. So if you're drinking, it allows you to go through many times when you would have otherwise been drinking and to overcome those temptations and cravings and all that kind of stuff. If you're smoking, much many more times that you go through the iterations, you know, you just don't. How many cigarettes do you smoke in a day? 20, so 30 days. It's gonna allow you to go over 600 different iterations of that, of that habit, you know, it's a long time. Um, so it just gives you uh, a better handle and it allows you to see things from a much clearer perspective. Once you get to day 25, for instance, on your 20, on your 30 day, uh, first 30 days, then start planning for the next 30 days. So you're not coming to day 30 or even worse, day 30, 31 and starting to think, what do we do now? You know, Start thinking about this well before you get to that uh, end goal. Then you move into your next 30 days, right? And before you know it, you've got 60 days done. Move into your next 30 days, and before you know it, you've got 90 days on, so forth, right? Um, the only way to change a habit is to experiment, right? I'm not talking about this from the perspective of not doing what you're trying not to do, right? So if you're quitting drinking, quitting smoking, quitting eating four cheese pizzas, you know exactly what you've got to do in order to achieve that end result. Right? You've got to not do that one thing that you said you're not going to do, right? But it's not as simple as that. What's left is a lot of gaps that used to be filled by the alcohol or the cigarettes or the fast food that you've now got to fill with something else. And hopefully you're thinking along the lines of filling those gaps with something positive, healthy, life-sustaining, uh, something which is going to extend your life and prolong your life uh, and make your life uh, about quality instead of uh, immediate uh, immediate results, you know, the getting what you want now and forgetting about the pain that you're going to be caused in the future, the consequences of those things. So when you're 
going into this, you're going into this from the perspective of a drinker's mind or a smoker's mind or a person who eats fast food uh, as a way of life. You're going into it from that perspective. So you've got to experiment with the alternatives. Some of the alternatives will work for you. Some of them you're going to be able to take on full force and others you're not going to be able to. So it's, it's just a question of experimenting, uh, trying different things out, trying different things on for size, um, seeing what fits into your particular life. There's no point in me telling you what fits into my life. Some of the things might fit into your life, but most of them won't. So you have to experiment until you find what works for you and what doesn't. Um, I often tell people to focus forwards when they're going into habit change, you know, don't focus backwards because what you focus on is what you get. But from the sense of understanding your old habit, um, you need to understand why you were doing it, you know, what benefits you were getting, what was the rewards that you were getting from uh, the drinking or the smoking or whatever. Um, and from there, you can start to work out how you can replace those rewards, right? I know it might sound like an obvious thing, but most people don't think about it from this perspective. And I'm not talking about replacing the reward of getting drunk. There is a reason why you're getting drunk, right? Um, and that reason might be to relax, to um, de-stress, to uh, overcome problems or forget about problems. So it's figuring out what's lying underneath and how you're going to get to that result or how you're going to deal with those things that you used to deal with in this way. Uh, and you'll find that there are much, much better ways of dealing with these situations than drinking or smoking or whatever. Number five is that in order to change, in order for any habit change to be effective, you've got to accept that you've got to get outside of your discomfort zone. Um, you've got to first accept that discomfort is part of the process of change. You've got to um, build that into your thinking and embrace the concept. If you can't embrace the concept of, of discomfort, you ain't gonna get past day one. Never mind day 30, because it's all about feeling discomfort. Discomfort about cravings, discomfort about the triggers, discomfort about not getting your reward, discomfort about thinking about your habit, discomfort about thinking about how you're going to replace the habit with something else. You know, there's so many levels of discomfort on this, but it is only discomfort. And all this discomfort will pass, not only in the short term, in terms of you have an, an incident of feeling the craving coming up, but also in the long term, you know, your feelings of cravings will last maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, if you do something about it, right? If you sit there and dwell on it, uh, mull over the discomfort in your mind and feel sorry for yourself, then it's gonna last longer, right? But if you do something about it, if you use a, one of the techniques that I teach um, here or over on Alcohol Mastery, then the discomfort will only last a few minutes. In the long term, the accumulation of discomfort will lessen because you're eliminating the habit your, the more days you get into this, the more uh, of a handle you get on your habit, uh, the less the discomfort will be. On the reverse side of it, if you don't quit your habit, you're talking about increasing the discomfort, right? You might decrease the discomfort that you feel in the moment, but you'll increase the discomfort that you feel in the long term because of the consequences of the habit, you know? Your consequences are the reasons why you're doing this in the first place. So listen to those. Um, when you're doing this, don't worry about perfecting things. You're never going to perfect things, right? You're just going to drive yourself mad with the whole idea, right? Don't worry about making mistakes either, you know? We all make mistakes and mistakes are part and parcel of the journey. They're just an integral part of what you have to go through. Same as discomfort, you know? You're gonna go through discomfort, you're gonna go through mistakes, and nobody is perfect, right? Everyone makes these mistakes, so don't worry about that. Number seven is to know your reason why 
Your reason why is what gives meaning to your habit change, why you're doing this, right? Uh, and the more, uh, the more of a deep understanding and a deep reason you've got behind it, a deep meaning, uh, a meaningful meaning, the better it is for you, the more likely you are to continue this into the long term, the more likely you are to, to embrace the whole prospect of habit change and embrace your new life and not you know be continuously looking back over your shoulder at what could have been or the old life that you used to live and how good it was you know if it was so fucking good you'd still be doing it you wouldn't be trying to change it so why are you trying to change it right so understand your reason why my reason why for most of the habits that I try and change in my life most of the the behaviors that I'm trying to get rid of, uh, most of the habits that I'm trying to establish in my life are revolving around people. So my son, and my granddaughter, and uh, my partner. Um, I just want to try and be the best possible version of myself as I can for other people, right? For myself as well, but you know, it's to, it's to have that underlying, I think it's, is to have something profound that you can look at yourself and think, you know, this is what keeps me awake at night. This is why I do anything, you know. This is the person that I live for. This is the reason I'm living for, you know. And have that reason why. And number eight, try and keep things as focused as you possibly can. And one of the best ways of doing that is to write things down. I encourage people at the beginning of any habit change to create a video of themselves or an audio depending on what they're comfortable with but a video is is better because it gives you not only uh, the sound of your own voice but it sort of it's a snapshot of you in time of what you look like and how you are your body language all this kind of stuff you know there's nothing like looking into your own eyes and hearing yourself explaining to yourself you know your past self explaining to yourself why you did this you know what were the reasons why you started it why you were doing it you know um, what was your meaning behind it you know what were the consequences that you were um, going through because of this habit um, and it's very powerful stuff you know but at the end of the day when you're trying to change and you're trying to make things happen on a day-to-day -day basis you know keep a journal and write down what you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis you know so at the end of the 30 days, once you get to day 25 and you start to plan your next 30 days, you can look back over your journal um, and you can see the things that you were going wrong for you, and see the obstacles that came in your way, see the mistakes that you made and see how you can integrate those into the next 30 days, into that plan for the next 30 days. And do plan, you know, treat the next 30 days like it is the first, you know, and plan what you're going to do, how you're going to get there. It should be a lot easier for you to plan at this stage um, because, you know, you've got experience. You know, you started out this journey with no experience, but now you have 35 days or 25 days when you get to, to the mark where you're planning for, for the next 30 days. Um, and you should have a lot of knowledge now about that you can use going forward and then do the same thing when you get to day 55 and you're planning for... Um, day 60 to 90 and do it so on and so forth until you don't need to do it anymore it becomes a part of who you are you know uh, your new habits become a part of your subconscious awareness and you just do it as as a part of your day-to-day -day living you know it just becomes a part of you so i hope you got something out of that i hope it helped the early days of habit change can be uh, trying times they can be difficult just because you've got to go through so much you've got to think about so much so keeping things simple keeping things basic is one of the best principles that I can I can teach you um, I'm going to end it there so remember that persistence is the key you know keep going at this and keep pushing uh, failure just cannot cope with persistence and the three P's of habit change are persistence positivity and patience uh, persistence keeps you going into the long term positivity gives you the uh, fuel for the path for the journey and patience keeps you on the road day by day by day until next time 
I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Take care of yourself. Good luck. Bye-bye now. Thank you.